I will turn it over to our presenters. Hello, everybody. I'm Andrew Beyer, um, and I am the Data Quality Coordinator in IMD. Um, and I work with enrollments. And so what I'm going to discuss with everybody is the importance of the submission of your enrollments. Um, and really, I know you guys don't admit, I mean, you guys don't um, submit the enrollments, but you do play a part in the information that your teachers need to have to put into the system. Um, and so um, whenever the time rolls around, usually September is when the teachers start putting in their enrollments and then we call it SESI. Um, and it's just the comprehensive school enrollment submission. Um, and they, they submit it into CTIMS. Um, they, they, what they'll need from you is a 10 digit student testing number. And the only place that you can get that is from the State Department of Ed. So if you have a teacher that comes to you and asks you for that, that is where you will go to get that. Each student has their own student testing number. That is how we distinguish between every student rather than requiring social security numbers. Um, we just, we do, we, um, we do it by the student testing number. Um, and then that follows into follow-up. So we collect follow-up for the previous year and we do it right now for seniors. So they also, your teachers also might come to you and ask you for uh, follow-up information on the students and the information that they that they fill out in CTIMS for follow up is the the type of work that the student is doing if they're um, employed if they're going to school if they're unemployed uh, if they are in the army just different things and so the teachers could also come to you and ask you for that information. Um, other than that, uh, they have the teachers have a lot of. Um, resources available to them, they can go out on our website, which is okcareertech.org. And let me share that with you and just show you what it looks like. Uh, we, we make sure that we send this out and that everybody knows, uh, but we know that some emails come from us and some emails come from the divisions here. So for the teachers that to access what they need, for SESI or for follow-up, they can come go to okcareertech.org and click on the CTIMS letters at the top of the screen. They'll scroll down to where they find uh, K-12 schools, excuse me, and the information that they need will be right here for SESI. They will have guidebooks and PowerPoints to, to show them how to submit everything and then also follow up down here. Okay, and I think for me, that is it. Unless anybody has any questions about that, I'll let Carol discuss what she needs to discuss. Hi, I'm Carol Hall. I'm the performance data analyst. Um, I actually used to do what Andrew does and have moved into this position. Um, we can't stress how important you guys are to helping the teachers get this information and be able to um, transmit that to us. Um, part of what I do is I gather information for Carl Perkins. Um, not all schools participate in that, but a lot of them do. And you get money based on your student population. So we like to stress to you how important it is to get those data elements, whether it be economically disadvantaged, um, academically disadvantaged. We have three new um, Federal, federally required elements, which is um, homeless, are they in a, uh, are they in foster care, and are their parents active military? So those three are new just within the last year or so we started collecting those three elements. Um, if you actually get some information on whether a student is academically or economically or any of those things or disabled, mid-year, please pass that information on to your instructors if they're the ones who are submitting that information to us. That way they can go in and correct that, their, that enrollment and, inc and incorporate that in. 
The other thing that I need to talk about is, which is another session, is the e-transcripts and the um, parchment. So we've worked with the State Department of Ed and they are currently, they are going to data mine information from our system to match with their system and create these e-transcripts for you, for your students. So it's really important that we get that STN number correct and any data elements that you can provide to us, the more we have, the easier it is to data match with the State Department of Ed and the better um, results we can get for you as far as how many students we have and where they need to be, that type thing. Um, I think right now that is really all we have um, as far as what we do and what we do with the data, but we'd really like to know what you would like to know, what, what you are, need to know from us. Somebody like to unmute and answer that question? I thought. Yeah, I have a question. Hi, Brandon. Hi, how are y'all today? Long time no see. <laughs> I know, it's been a while. <laughs> hey, uh, quick question. So you said, uh, Andrea, or Andrea, you said that the it is still currently only done for seniors follow-up. Mm -hmm. And is that in all the high school programs? That's in the high school programs in the K-12 school. school. So at the tech centers, it is, that's not the case. Tech centers, it is all the students. But at the K-12 schools, it is the students that were seniors the previous year. Okay, so there had been a lot of discussion about maybe opening that up mm -hmm. to junior classes because, um, you know, we have a lot of a lot of students that actually finish, you know, if they start as a freshman, they actually finish before senior year. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they may complete or at least be a concentrator in multiple programs, but if they don't do it their senior year, then they don't get counted. It's as if they never participated. And so well, I think we're missing right. a ton of students. Oh, I agree. We agree completely. Uh, we, we have it, so like with Ceci, um, the, the instructors submit all of their students in their classes. So if, if and when it comes to the decision is that we're going to also do follow-up for the juniors, we will make sure that that is available in c -tips. Does that make sense? Yes. Because the students are already being submitted anyway. And so really what we just, we just need to get the word that so and i will tell you brandon that on the carl perkins side we actually go back um and it wants a concentrator always a concentrator so we, you don't lose that that enrollment mm -hmm. or that information so we actually go back and look and see if they have ever taken a course other than the one they're enrolled in for that year and go back several years to make sure we're actually adding those those hours for that student. That's why it's so important that we get accurate data and as much data as we can, so we know that that oh that's that John Smith is the same John Smith that I'm doing information for. So if we have the more information we have, the more accurate information we have, the better we can track that and keep those on there and um, count those as concentrators. Well, and that's great. for Perkins 5, those, um, that, um, it used to be 340 hours and now it's 240. So 360 and now it's 240. We also have a um, certification uh, element now to where they, the teachers can go in um, it's actually open and SESI is also open year round, but they can go in and they can update certifications as the students receive them. Mm -hmm. 
um, which also ties into the work-based learning. Right. Yeah, because I think that's a lot of data that I, I at least think people felt like we were missing. I mean, I think it would be information that would also help our state get more federal mm -hmm. funding. I, I think agree. that is probably why we didn't increase last year when we should have. Mm -hmm. And then, I agree. Uh, you know, our schools, I think, would receive more funding possibly if, if that was collected. But I mean, it sounds like, you know, it's better than it was for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and, and tracking those certifications, I think this testing number and tracking by the testing number is also going to be very beneficial because that's at least a consistent number coming from one source. Right. Yes. Right. So that's great. So thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Any other questions from anybody? You know that whatever question that you are wanting to ask, everyone else wants to know the answer to too. So. Oh, yeah. But you can also call us anytime. Our number and our email is out on the website. And so anytime you have any questions or the instructors have any questions, they can always call our email. Web page again, just since in case anybody missed that. And we do have CTIM support. We highly recommend that you contact that. We have um, a staff member monitors that all the work week. One of us monitors that all the time during working hours. So the CTIM support um, is really important in that. And that's the easiest way to get to who you need in our division if you're not sure who you need to talk to. And um, we have templates, we have a video, we also we have, have PowerPoint, guidebooks yeah, and a PowerPoint. Have, so have lots of resources for, for um, the teachers to use. And if they ever come to you and say, I need to get information from Sessie, for Sessie, you can come here, scroll down to the K-12 section, and you can look at any of that stuff. That's all open to anybody. You don't have to sign in or do anything like that to get into it. And you can look at it and see what kind of information that we're gathering. Do we have any other questions? Um, we can't thank you guys enough for the jobs you do because they are de you're definitely appreciated and an integral part of what we all have to do in trying to get these kiddos reported correctly situated. <laughs> situated. What is your most common question that you get asked when you get phone calls? Well, from the instructors, when we get, because we don't really discuss, talk to the counselors very often, but from the instructors, it is the one thing they always get hung up on is the student testing number. Um, and that is, they, they, they think that it's the school ID, which is, different. you know, it's different, but that makes sense as to why they would, they would think that. Um, and we always refer them to their counselors. Um, so that's the counselors, other than if it's a bigger school and they have a registrar or something like that, the counselor would be the person who would have the contact at SCE to get that student testing number. But then also one thing to remember that the teachers do get um, confused about all of the questions or all of the information that we're gathering is for the student. So there is, there's a column that asks um, if it, they're a single parent. So it's not if the student has a single parent, it is if the student is a single parent. So everything pertains to the student. It's not, right. it's not to, to the, to to the their parents, household. it's, it's, right. it's to, the, to the student. I would say those two are the biggest, are the biggest questions that we get most right. of the time. And we do get asked why we ask that, and that mm -hmm. is a federal, uh, a yeah, federal, federal required. Mm -hmm. um, that's not something we just personally 
said, oh, we want to know this. It's actually federal guidelines that we have to ask that. Um, so I think that a lot of the confusion, like Andrew said, is they think it's, oh, they're from a single parent home. Well, that's not it. We need to know if they are a single parent. And that's actually one of the special pops now, and I'm sure that right. why it's right. being asked is it is actually considered a special pop to be a right. 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 And Carol, did you say that those special pops that that data is collected, it changes the funding for Carl Perkins? Well, I don't know how much that changes we'd have to ask. I'd have to get with federal legislation to find out, but we do do a um, needs assessment on the schools and that is all that information is included in the needs assessment. I don't know exactly how they do that formula or how that formula works um, at this point, but um, so that's with federal legislation. But I do know that with the CARES Act, they looked at what, um, was Brandon, you'll understand this from the tech center point of view. Um, they looked at what was turned in at an iPads mm -hmm. for the CARES Act money. So depending on how that was turned in, that did make a difference on what kind of money they got from the CARES Act. And if you're wondering about the special pops, there's nine categories and it includes disabilities, economically disadvantaged, non-traditional fields, single parents, homeless, English learners, out of workforce, foster care, and parent in the armed forces. We actually have a special POPs guide and I really recommend if you don't have it. Um, since we don't have very many people on here, if you shoot me an email, I can probably get you one of these. And my email is sharon.baker at careertech.ok.gov. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, that's actually a really good resource. I have one and <laughs> it's very useful. Um, so when they added those this year, that's one of the things that we've had to do is try to go back and figure out how to add into our student enrollment system as to how to collect some of those and so um i guess at some point it'll start showing up in the reports but we don't even like at this point we hadn't even had it on the applications or um, in our student accounting system to even account for those so hopefully we can get that fixed and get more right. of that information out there and the record layout in our guidebooks the record layout of where that is when you're when you're um, if you're actually uploading it is in our is on our web page too so that that may help them and we have this template that um, we made and this is the exact if they're going to upload their SESI their enrollment this is exactly what oh Andrew's going to share it. These are the things that we asked for. This is the template for them to, to put the information in for each student and then they can upload it into our system. Um, and it just has, it has everything on here and scrolling over it, it, over here it has the demographics, but then this is where it gets into the disability. The special population. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we did for this for this column. We made sure that that well, I guess it says students, parents, military, active duty. So this would be pertaining mm -hmm. to the parent instead of the student. So <clears throat> any other questions? Sharon, do I need to give this back to you? Sharon, do you have control? Are you still hosting? 
Do I have control? No. <laughs> you all still have it. When is, oh, there's a, something in the chat. Oh, when is it? So, SESI, salary and teaching um, is due September 30th, and that's when the teacher goes in and they enter all of their their salary information and their daily schedule. And then the SESI is due, the first submission is due by October 31st. And then let me, let me share my screen with you again and show you. We have the submission dates out here. Um, the initial submission is October 31st. And then if there's additional enrollment, they can submit it by January 31st. And then again on May 31st. So again, it's open year round, but the divisions and IND, we really push for the first submission to be submitted by October 31st. And the thing to remember too, is that anybody that you put in there, when they turn, if, if you only have them for a week and they drop, if you forget to drop them out of your enrollment, um, you will end up seeing them on your follow-up. So mm -hmm. the next year they'll end up being on the follow-up. Well, this is a quiet group. I know somebody has a burning question and they're afraid to ask. Well, ladies, I really appreciate you taking time out for us today. And remember, they are they are welcoming your your questions. You can email them or give them a call. Yes, anytime. Thank we're, you. We're all. here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you.